Hi, my name is Kimberly Watts, and I'm on staff here at Agape Therapeutic Riding Resources. <laughs> and our mission at Agape is to cultivate personal growth by strengthening mind, body, and spirit through unique horse-assisted experiences. Now, typically, those experiences happen in person at one of our two central Indiana locations where we serve children and adults who have a disability or a mental health need. And we serve them through our therapeutic riding and equine assisted learning programs. But one of our amazing volunteers, Joanne Burke, has a passion and had a vision for ways that we could share horse experiences with everybody regardless of where they are at. So with the help of some of our other volunteers, staff members, and some of our smallest and arguably cutest members of our herd are five mini horses, including my friend Big Boy here. Joanne has put together a series of videos so that you can experience the wonderment of horses wherever you are. We're excited to bring you happy trails. Let's learn about animal talk. We are at Purdue University at the School of Pharmacy and it's almost the end of the semester. And the school invited us over with the minis just to kind of help the students meet them and relax. And so we've been having a real good day over here and Kimberly and Caroline are here. Kimberly, what is your title at Agape. I am the Community Engagement Manager. Okay, and Caroline? I am the Equine Director. All right, so we are here today with Cece and a little noise here, and Sunny and Prince. Okay, Kimberly, what how are these horses dressed and why are they dressed like this? So today we are at Purdue University, Boiler Up, and the pharmacy department, the pharmacy school asked us to come up. It's almost Mental Health Awareness Month and it's almost finals time for them. So I to bring the minis to just give a little bit of a stress relief break, a chance for the students to interact with the horses and just let off a little steam and have a little fun. So we have Prince here, he's wearing a pharmacy school lab coat, so he's official. It's got the Purdue emblem on it. Sonny is representing Agape Therapeutic Riding Resources in his Agape swag. And with Cece, boiler up today, she's got her Purdue shirt on and her Purdue cheerleader bows. Okay, wonderful. So these horses are on a break. How long can they work with visits before they need a break, Caroline? So we schedule our mobile programming to be 90 minutes long. And for the most part, that's how long a program is. Purdue has asked us to be here for two 90 minute sessions. And because of that, we have a range for our miniatures to have a break and get a little bit of time away from people to just have some downtime and be horses and have some water. You know, today we're really focusing a lot uh, on communication. So, how do you know when these horses are relaxed enough to go do visits, and how do you know when they need a break? Well, I we think know... they communicate to you, I think. Yeah, they do. We know that they need a break when they become antsy and start avoiding having contact with people that they aren't familiar with. Our horses receive a lot of training to be comfortable with having people all around them and doing all kinds of things. And they become very tolerant of people being in front of them, behind them, um, reaching over them, getting down and taking pictures with them and they can tolerate that for quite a long time, but when they start becoming fidgety and fussy, they're trying to tell us that they're ready to have a break and that they would like to have a little bit more personal space around them. How can you tell when a horse is relaxed? 
So I can tell that Prince is relaxed right now because I am not asking him to stand still, but he is choosing to. We got a nice loose lead rope and he's just choosing to stand here with us. I can tell that Sonny is a little anxious because he's pawing at the ramp and looking around at his environment to see what's going on. Chris here has got his head hanging down and he's just casually looking from side to side, just easily exploring his environment, relaxed enough to come over and get the water. Um, so those are some of the signs that I look for and I can see how he's being curious about like Kimberly and the ramp and the other horses. Those are all positive signs from a horse. Okay. Now, horses read what's going on with people. You can see him pawing. So we're just sitting here. We had some lunch and they're hanging out with us. Now they visited with a lot of students today. Mm -hmm. How do horses read what's going on with human beings? That's all worked into some of the work that Agape does, I think, their yeah. lessons and so forth. So they read body language. That is their primary language. So we all think about like horses don't talk. Um, they just don't speak. They, um, their language is the body language, and so they can read energy, they can read calm energy, they can read anxious energy. Um, they have the emotional intelligence of about a four-year-old child. So if you think about a four-year-old child, they, they have a full range of emotions. They can be sad, they can be happy, they can be scared, they can be angry. Um, and those emotions are usually big. And a horse's emotions can also be big if we aren't paying attention to the small, subtle things that they're communicating through like how they're standing and how they're holding their head um, and what they're doing with their ears. So they communicate with one another by body language? Yes. So like Sonny just came over here and moved Prince out of the way because um, he wants to keep CC nice and close to him. Oh. So he wants to be with his friend and he didn't really want Prince there. Yeah. So they do this by body language. Yeah, by positioning. Like right now you can see how he has positioned himself in between the two horses got his head towards CC and he's kind of blocked with his body Prince's access to getting to CC. Which and one? A little tail swish there and it kind of pinned his ears at him like you can't get over here buddy. So that was the message. That was a message. Okay of these horses are herd animals today so is Sonny the, the boss? Um, I don't really think of them as having like a definite boss. Horses really interact uh, with each other and it is an ebb and a flow. They are looking out for each other and it's about taking care of their needs and protecting each other to stay safe. Um, so many times Sonny will be more assertive because he's confident in that way. But I have definitely seen both of these other horses also be assertive at different times if they are motivated enough to do so. So when we lead a horse, how does that horse know to follow a human being? Well, if we are confident in our body posture, so we're standing as tall and we're looking where we want to go and we've got our whole body pointed in that direction, the horse will happily follow us as long as there's not some other influence that might be motivating them otherwise. So if I wanted to go over here, but there was food over there, Prince might be more motivated to try to go to the food. Um, if something was scaring him, he might be motivated to get away from the thing that's scaring him. But all things aside from that, he will happily go where I lead him if I'm confident in where I'm going. So, I have a cat. 
it's very hard to lead a cat. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. It's much easier to lead a horse. It is. So cats tend to be uh, solitary animals, and they are predators, so they have um, very strong opinions and can take good care of themselves. Horses are prey animals, and they like to function in a group, and they naturally want a leader. And if you can provide that leadership, they'll be happy to follow you. If you're struggling with that leadership, then they will step up and they will be the leader and they will expect you to follow them. So this is incorporated into lessons, therapeutic writing lessons and some groundwork down at Agape because the way that human beings communicate with a horse or with others is also very much what you just described. You either are in a leadership position, or if you aren't, what does the horse do? What the horse wants? Yes, they will. <laughs> I often tell people um, that horses require a leader, and if you can't provide that leadership, they will, and you may not like their leadership skills. <laughs> because they might take you somewhere you don't want to go. That's correct. <laughs> well, Caroline, thank you so much, and Kimberly, it's been wonderful talking with you today. Now, one of the things I've said in some of these videos is, right now it's springtime, and there's wonderful green grass over there, so uh, they're not over there eating grass, because they can't eat grass now, you don't know what's on the grass, and they can't just be out there doing it. Well, thank you so much, it's been wonderful to uh, talk with both of you. Human Communication from using our voices on the phone to using our fingers to use an app. Here is the little robot running around campus at Purdue delivering food. We're on a mini visit here and we're watching this little robot deliver some food here at lunchtime. Go down the sidewalk. Watch the body language at a family gathering. Watch us clap our hands and cheer at a ball game. Listen to all the chatter at a restaurant. We also communicate through experience. When we see something, when we touch something, we can learn. Here I'm teaching students in college about animal-assisted interventions. Not only are they learning about how to use animals in interventions, they're also helping me get them ready to visit people in nursing homes. I also work with students on a music and memory project at a nursing home. Here, we are meeting at a nursing home and we've had a lot of fun working with the residents and they had an iPad and were able to play their favorite music and they just loved it. Sometimes we just want to sit and watch and communicate with nature through just seeing what's around us. Here's some bears that I saw down at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Then I thought about sheep I had seen out in the west. Then I thought about the bison, the buffalo I'd seen in Yellowstone. Out in the woods, early May, the foliage is just coming out on the 
trees. Birds are singing. So peaceful out here. Let's go back to the barn at Agape. another encounter of horses that aren't usually together and there comes Smokey over with Gunner. He did a little sniff and turned away. Communication with horses, driving a horse cart. So Caroline got a riding whip. Why do you need a whip, Caroline? So the whip can um, help you give your aids because you're not on the horse and you're not at the horse's head. So I have commands that he can listen to, but if I need a little extra help, I can tap on his sides to help him um, really move according to my commands. Okay, I'm in and ready for you to unclip, Polly. Yeah. Yeah. Off. Off. So we use the words ha and g to help them turn left and right. Ha goes to the left, g goes to the right. They're just kind of standard driving terms, at least around this part of the country. Get up. Good boy. So he knows those commands. And oh. Holly, can you make an adjustment? It seems like it's gotten caught on um, the reins. something. Yeah, the reins got caught. There we go. All right, that looks a lot better. You want to climb in? So this is really good exercise for him and a good mental stimulation. Horses are better designed for pulling a cart than they are for riding. Um, they can lean into the breast collar, which is this right here, and pull along. This is just a really good way for us to exercise such a small little horse since we can't ride him, we're too big. Walk up. Walk up. 
There you go, the boy. It's a beautiful day out here at Agape in the springtime for a ride today. How long has he been pulling carts, Caroline? Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure because, like I said, I'm not the one that trained him. Cody trained him and at least five years at least five years he's driven off and on in the time that i've been here but this is going to be the first time that we're going to be really good about consistently driving him and using it as a form of exercise for big boy big boy you want to show off your trot okay we'll watch it let's trot bud all right getting him trot down the road here today. And we'll watch them turn him around and bring him back. Oh, that's wonderful this afternoon to see him out working with the cart. He is such a wonderful little horse. Actually, he's kind of a large mini, but he is a mini horse. He is not a pony. There he turns around and we'll watch him come back. trotting back. So right now I can notice the big boy's feeling a little unsure about the sandbags. I see that because his ears are really forward. Oh, the sandbags sitting down there. He's not sure what they are. So I'm going to just give him encouragement and let him go slow if that helps him out. So he's a little afraid of the sandbag sitting here. There we go. So she encouraged him, slowed down, and gave him some encouragement as he walked by the sandbags. Horses are prey animals, so if they're afraid of something, they want to get away from it. So she slowed him down and gave him a lot of encouragement going around what he wasn't sure about. Why is he snorting, Carola? That, that actually is a good sound. He's uh, kind of blowing it out, blowing out his air. He's letting me know he feels less stressed, probably because we got past the sandbag. And it was a positive experience. So he's putting his head down, he's relaxing. And he's like, oh, okay, I was all right. All right, big boy. Oh. Hope we helped you find some happy memories today.